started. Um, so it's a new cohort called Me to Order. Um, so start with the signing of the attendance sheet. Do you have that with you? All right, thank you. And before we start, let's have all of the proxies go around and just say your name and then who you are on the proxy for. Okay. I'm Proxy. I'm Proxy for Amy. And I'm Proxy for Amy. Okay. I'm Proxy for Amy. Okay. I'm Proxy for Amy. Hi, I'm Jacob. I'm here for Amy. Okay, great. And then just a reminder to Proxies, you're more welcome to contribute to the conversation in any way you just came out for. Um, all right, so then we'll go ahead with the approval of the agenda. Are there any amendments to the agenda? Okay, great. Okay, so the general representative after your presentation. Okay, great. We have a general one. Officer report. Officer report. Okay. All right, are there any other? I need to strike the ASRF. Okay. Uh, Mark? Uh, I'm going to strike the same old program. Okay. I'm going to strike the ASRF. Uh, she, she, uh, she actually is here. Oh, she's fine. Yes. Uh, okay, Brian, I'm actually going to move to change the order a little bit due to like striking things. Um, so we'll have Roxanne go first. Um, then we'll have Yael go second, so put you as B instead of E. Um, and then we'll have Emily go next, then we'll have Rebecca go after Emily, uh, and then we'll have Mania go last. Okay, are there any other amendments to the agenda? Okay, I can entertain a motion to approve the agenda anytime as well. All right, so second. Second by Ian. All those in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six. Those against? And those abstain? All right, so six zero zero vote. The approval of the agenda. The agenda has been approved. Um, we've gone to approval of the minutes from July 20th. Are there any discussion regarding the minutes from July 20th? No discussion? Heather? I move to approve the minutes from July 20th. All right, great. Is there a second? Second by Ian. All those in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six. Those against? And those abstain? All right, just six zero zero vote. The minutes have been approved in July 20. Um, and now we'll go ahead and do public comments. So if anyone here makes public comment, you have um, two minutes. The first round will be audio only, so your face will not be present on the screen. The second round of public comments will be audio and visual. Um, so we'll go ahead and start with audio only public comments. Okay, so you can turn the live stream back on. All right, and this will be audio and visual public comments. Okay, seeing none, I will go ahead and do more around. <laughs> All right, seeing none, I will close public comment at 7.07. All right, we'll go straight into appointments. So first up, we have Roxanne. Um, so this appointment was actually tabled from last meeting. Um, so she'll be right on Skype, so if you want to go ahead and just review it. Oh, yeah, this is her ARC um, review. So, you want to review it? Yeah. Ian, so Ian was acting chair until Heather got back, but she just got back, and he was acting chair during the meeting. So, Ian, I'll pass it on to you for her ARC review. So, again, this was from the last meeting. If we can go ahead and just call her in the meantime. Hi, Roxanne, can you hear me? Hey, can you hear me? Oh. Okay. Oh, we can turn our video on. Okay. All right. Sorry, it's loading. Okay, can you see us? We just see Patty. <laughs> All right. Can you see us? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so, Roxanne, before we get started, we're going to go ahead and read a quick description um, of the Campus Programs Committee. 
and then read your ARC review, and then we'll go into your, um, you have one minute for your introduction, followed by five minutes for discussion, and then one minute for closing. Okay. So we'll go ahead and read your description of your position first, and then we'll go to your ARC review. So, okay. I'm just going to read the description. Yeah. Um, okay, so Roxanne is applied for the Campus Programs Committee, CPC. Um, so the Campus Programs Committee is the subcommittee of the Programs Activities Board. They are in charge of overseeing funding regarding projects and programs of the educational and or cultural interest directed at the student body or specific segments of the student body. They're in charge of soliciting student views on the nature and goals of campus programming and holds hearings to, all to allocate funds for campus programs. They must attend a four-hour orientation in early August, participate in CPC's six hearings, which are held throughout the academic year, beginning in September, and attend quarterly meetings. In addition, they must sit on the CPC mini fund committee for one quarter and attend their weekly hearings, which are held from week two to week eight. The four undergrad members, three regular and one alternate, are appointed by the USAC president for a one-year one year term, July through June. There is also a mandatory summer retreat. Okay, thank you, Heather. And so I'll pass off to Ian to read the ARC review. Sounds good. So uh, we thought that her experience, um, her prior experience as a member on CDC would give her um, allow her to succeed. But we'd like to see some new ideas and innovation in regards to outreach and uh, education of funding source. And we also want to see a very willingness to challenge the structure of the funding source and how money is all good. But uh, overall, we want you to be an applicant, and we recommend her for three uh, zero zero votes in favor. Okay. Great. Thank you, Ian. Um, so now, Rebecca, let me pull up my timer and I pass it on to you. So again, you'll have one minute for your introduction. I'll give you, like, I'll say, like, 10 or like 10 seconds left. Okay. You can't really see me, so I'll say it. Um, and then you will have five minutes for questions from the council, and then one minute for your closing. Okay. So I have the timer, so whenever you're ready, you can go ahead. Okay. So um, again, my name is Roxanne Vergara, and I'm an incoming senior uh, with a geography major and education studies uh, minor. Uh, things that I'm going to be involved in for this upcoming school year is uh, the Education Studies Advisory Board, uh, prep, which is a CSC project, and I'm also going to be an RA for Res Lab. Um, if appointed to CPC, this is going to be my second year being on this committee. And um, from this past year, I've learned, I think that I've learned so much being on this um, committee that um, I hope that, that being on it again would help me become a better uh, committee member with the things that I've learned. Um, I want to do spe specifically CPC again because I think that I'm most knowledgeable about its goals and objectives and um, I really enjoy learning about the different programs that uh, UCLA students offer and how it connects back to the committee. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so I'll turn it over to the council for any questions that they have. In Proxy Zero, of course, welcome to ask questions as well if you're interested in doing so. Um, so I'll start the timer and if anyone has any questions for Roxy? Hello. <laughs> Hi. Um, what changes, if you would make any, um, to the application process to make it easier for student organizations to apply to the Um, sorry. Um, I think one of the problems that we had last year it was, it was regarding the food. Um, a lot of the organizations didn't know what type of food was acceptable because uh, a lot of groups wanted to buy like sodas for their students and coffee and um, I guess something that I learned was that we don't fund that type of thing so I guess something that we should add on the application would be um, like healthier, healthy options or options that we're able to fund like water yeah and like give you like apple juice or orange juice. Okay. Are there any other questions? Um, okay. Um, what is your definition of fair funding? Um, I believe that fair funding definitely um would like their how their goals connect back to uh, CPC's goals um, because specifically our, our proposal is for educational or cultural um, programs that are are specific to like the Los Angeles community or the UCLA community. So um, definitely looking at that and. 
um, how they're really, how they're setting up their program because um, you know, both of my experience definitely with that like how what, how much time they put into it and how exactly they're getting everything. So just making sure that they know what they're doing and that it uh, connects back to um, the programs that we fund specifically. Are there any other questions? Okay, last call. Okay, seeing that, we'll go ahead straight into your um, conclusion. So you have one minute for your closing. Okay. So um, thank you again for your time. Um, I apologize for having to reschedule this from the first time that I was supposed to have this hearing. Um, but I just want to say that CBC has definitely been an honor and a pleasure. Um, I feel like being part of this committee has helped me to see um, the different UCLA organizations and what they have to offer as well as how passionate these students are about making these programs. Um, I believe that I'm more qualified for this committee because uh, not only would it be my second time, but I feel like I'm most knowledgeable about what to expect from these groups and how it best connects to CPC's goals and um, how that would, be, how my experience would be able to give the best um, fair funding as possible to these groups. Okay. Great, thank you so much. Um, so we'll go ahead now, we'll give a round of applause. Um, so now we begin our discussion. So usually the applicant's present, I offer them the opportunity to either if they prefer to leave the room or to stay and kind of hear a discussion. Um, so you're welcome to either stay on Skype and kind of listen to what the discussion is, because you can watch it on USAC Live anyway, or you're welcome to turn it off and I can, I guess, call you with the results. So it's just your preference, whatever you would like to do. Um, I'll just say, it's okay, fine. Perfect. <laughs> so I just want to offer that as an opportunity. Um, so we'll go ahead into discussion regarding Roxanne. Yeah. Uh, I really appreciate the discussion about like, kind of making your right discussion concerning the Sunday 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 discussion, especially for cultural works. Because I've participated in cultural organizations and that was the biggest struggle figuring out how to do the discussion for our paper. Um, and discussions like that is the key element that tends to cross the so um, I'm really happy to share that. Okay. Anything else? I can also update you. I just want to reemphasize, you know, we really thought it was an asset to the committee that she has a great experience and uh, I think it's really important to sort of just how things work and everything like that. And it's I think we've got the chance to stay on. Okay. Anything else I can also entertain a motion to that you say? I move to approve Roxanne Vergara, sorry if you come to Roxanne, Vergara. Yeah, Vergara, yeah. To the Canvas Program Committee. Okay, there's a second. Second by Ian, all those in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six. Those against? And those who abstain? All right, to six zero zero vote, Roxanne's been approved for your CPC. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Dr. I really appreciate it, and thanks for Skyping in. Okay, thank you. Have a good night. All right, you too. Okay, so Patty, um, if you can start getting Emily set up, because um, next up we have the L, who's here in person. Um, so let's just start getting Emily's ready. Um, but the L, do you want to come up front? Um, if you want to go ahead, actually, you can see if you want. Can you read the position description, and then Ian will go into the ARC? Okay, so the Community Activities Committee, or CAC. The Community Activities Committee is a subcommittee of the Programs Committee's Board. And it oversees funding regarding projects for, which were created as learning and service experiences for UCLA student volunteers to work with off-campus, non-UCLA student populations. They act as a forum for soliciting views on the nature and goals of community service and makes allocation decisions for community service projects. They must attend four-hour orientation in early August and attend meetings which are held at least once per quarter. They must take part in hearings that last from morning until night, must make at least two site visits. The four undergraduate members, three regular and one alternate are appointed by the USAC president for a one-year term, term, July through June. It is encouraged that you have experience with being a part of an organization that has applied for CAC, have knowledge about the importance of the programs, and that it is mandatory to attend meetings and meetings. Okay, so we'll go ahead and 
And then um, as far as A or C, do you want to explain or do you want me to? Yeah, so it's um, just because of the scheduling of the like some final recording will see the view uh, of the out. But she's going to come for all of us and you're all welcome to ask any questions later on. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, we'll come here up front. Um, so you'll have one minute for your opening, followed by five minutes uh, for questions by the council, and then one minute for closing. Yeah, you can say just right in front. Thank you. And then I'll raise my hand. We have about 10 seconds left, um, just to kind of get this in. So as mentioned, my name is Yael Pineda. I'm going to be a third year psychology um, major. And as um, this past year, I was given the opportunity to work uh, as the administrative project director for the AB 540 project, which works with undocumented students within the LA County and its different regions and different um, and with um, by, uh, so I was in charge of applying for the programming funds um, given through USAC, and with that I was able to, uh, uh, we had a $20,000 budget just for outside campus um, community service, uh, for, like for our recipients and for our, our goals. So with that, I was able to see the importance given to, to the mentoring services that uh, student-led on-campus groups provide for people that are not in, on the UCLA campus. Um, so I was able to see the, the, all right, okay, well. <laughs> okay. Great, thank you. Um, so go ahead for five minutes for questions. And then also, if we tend to go over five minutes because she doesn't have her ARC interview, I can also entertain a motion to extend it if we're at that point. Um, but I'll bring that up closer if we approach five minutes. Um, so we can go ahead if anyone has any questions. Ian? How do you decide which uh, community activities, or sorry, which groups are like funded to prioritize? So otherwise, in other words, how do you ensure that uh, funded groups are available? Well, I think just by looking at the, just as the CAC guidelines um, state, that just by looking by the, at the nature and the the core of the project schools, you can see whether they're trying to make a difference within like the outside uh, Los Angeles community. Um, so with that, you know, we need to ensure that we give proper, um, you know, like justice, like funding for different groups, and just, um, you know, like upholding the CAC guidelines. I think that's a very good way to start, so that all, uh, so that funds are properly allocated. Oh, yeah. um, this question, how do you apply for the applications of the A540 project? What uh, problems did you have with the line? If you did have problems, what problems did you have? So we had issues with um, with the line items. We did receive a 9,000 uh, allocation you know, out of 10,000. So we didn't encounter that many problems. But in terms of appealing our allocation, you know, it was, it was really difficult just um, because we needed like some line items. And I mean, like, I know that there are like budget uh, budget cuts like in place like within the entire university and the UC system, but just um, properly being able to like appeal for different line items and ensuring that projects do get the amount that they you know that you know if they they are in dire need and then they prove that they will make a you know a, a, a difference within the you know the Los Angeles community. Um, so obviously this position is a huge time commitment. What other um, you know, time commitments do you have outside of obviously being a student and um, this position if you were to receive it? So as, how will you balance all of those? As of now, I'm only hoping to apply for the community development um, for social justice uh, research cohort through AP at Camel Hall. So apart from that, I hold a working position at housing in the mail room and it's just about 12 hours. And uh, working as the administrative project director last year was it was really hard to balance everything. But um, you know, it, I mean, once you get used to the like the very like high like you know quick pace um, like week by week schedule, I mean, it, it's not that hard to you know to manage everything. Are there any other questions? Okay, great. Um, so you mentioned uh, interest. For going when a group doesn't have all the funding it needs. Since there are more groups applying with greater needs than the amount of money, what would you recommend 
should all of the funds be allocated, in which case there's no opportunity for appeals because there's nothing left? Or would you recommend that some money be held back and then create a fund so that the appeal process could exist? I think definitely we, sh we should create a separate uh, pool of money, as you suggested, to um, be able to grant that appeal. Um, you know, and I know that the student referendum fee was, you know, like the process of like being passed, but it it was denied um, for the students. So, you know, it might be because they were trying to increase student fees by three percent. You know, and a lot of students they're just not comfortable with like, you know, paying more. You know, seeing that tuition um, costs are increasing. So, I think we should definitely try and find ways to increase the pool of money because the pool of money is like it's not increasing; it's staying steady within the years and student groups are increasing, you know, so we need to be able to, you know, allocate for that, for the increase in student groups. So. Any other questions? Um, one more time. Okay. Um, with that, we'll go into your one minute for your closing. So I'll hold on the time again when you have 10 seconds left. Okay, I get some seconds to think. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just switching it. I'll start coming whenever you're ready. Okay. Um, so if granted um, the ability to be on the CC board, uh, I will do my best to uphold the CC guidelines and ensure that we do get, uh, you know, proper funding for the uh, for the different student-led groups on campus. And I hope that we're able to um, increase the services given to the to the uh, community outside of UCLA because I have seen like how much students hold that with such um, respect and you know like they, they want that you know because we need to be able to act uh, advocate for personal development you know so that students who are in high school and in college can rise to a higher education and be able to you know like afterwards like give back to other people okay great thank you so much for Okay, yeah, so we're going to go into discussion. So you're welcome to stay in the room or step outside wherever you feel more comfortable. I don't want to stay, but it should be good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can just want to sit down right here. Okay, great. Um, so we'll go into any discussion. <laughs> okay, um, any discussion regarding the appointment? All yeah. Um, I think that the point with Nikia, especially with the Asian Territory Project, um, is really determined that she understands what it takes to help the staff of the community, which it is hard for some student groups to understand since we're so focused on just the local level. Um, so I think it's great that she's experienced in that and one that she brought up how she would kind of figure out where student groups would be able to make an action to the Asian Yeah. Yeah, I just want to uh, echo all this. Um, Summers, because I think it's important that we're not always just so focused on UCLA, that we really think about community service, we really do work to the bottom of the community, and we should really run that to the table. That's something positive. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I have a motion to move. And then I approve uh, the allocation. Yeah, is that what you're saying? Okay. Uh, for uh, community FCC. All right, is there a second? Second for our community. All those in favor, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Let's see your hand up. Okay, five, six. All right, those against. And those abstain. All right, just six zero zero vote. Y'all can approve for a safe vote. Congratulations. You're all going to stay for us. Thank you. Okay, um, so next up we have Emily. Um, so while we're pulling up for Skype, I'm going to have Heather read. Um, actually, wait till it's right Hello, Emily. Hi. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, is your video on, or do you prefer to have it off? Up to you. Um, it's, um, can you see me? No. You see uh -oh. the blue little Skype person. 
There you are. Hello. Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. Okay, um, so before we have you get started, we're going to go ahead and do a quick reading of the description of your position, and then we're going to read your ARC review, um, and then we'll go into, you have a one minute for opening, followed by five minutes from questions from the council, and then one minute for your closing. Okay, that's it. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to pass it off to Heather to read the description of the position. Great. <clears throat> the chairperson of the Community Service Mini Fund Committee serves as the budget director for the committee. The committee is dedicated to providing funds for student community service programs, activities, or services which contribute to the elimination of poverty and social problems and or provide services such as health and education to disadvantaged groups. Five undergraduate appointees, one chairperson, and four members. Two of the four committee members must be affiliated with the CPO and the other two with CSC. They hold five years per academic year and it's for a one year term, July through June. Okay, thank you, Heather. Let's pass off to Ian for the ARC review. Sounds good. So we thought that the uh, ample knowledge and experience uh, in the review, which is great. Uh, but moving forward, we'd like to see specific plans of how she would outreach um, student groups and make sure that the funds are accessible to them. Okay, thank you. Um, so Emily, will pass off to you now. So again, you have one minute for your opening. I'll say 10. I'll say the microphone. You have 10 seconds left. Um, so I will be timing you, and I will start timing whenever you're ready to begin. All right, so my name is Emily, and I'm the second year of science making this year. And I've been lots of wild since quarter. And I'm going to be guys kind of part this year as well as this commission's final trip. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, so we'll go ahead to five minutes for discussion. Also, Emily, the microphone keeps kind of going in and out a little bit, so just try to project as much as possible. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, um, so five minutes for questions from the council. Are there any questions? Hello. Um, what are some of the needs for funding needs for um, community service organizations? Well, um, from my experience, the project file, um, it's always very important that um, some needs, such as um, very important supplies for education, that the uh, pens and <coughs> art supplies, because um, we always get like, these educational groups. Um, as well as uh, transportation is very important. And just uh, it depends on the group, but uh, there's anything that has to do with essential supplies, like if it's a health group um, or health brands of supplies, for as of course, groups like Project Mild, even for school supplies. So just anything that helps them get their week to week or day to day sites completed is most important in my experience. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Oh, yeah. Um, so, like Amy mentioned, how would you increase accessibility for students? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Yeah, how would you increase? Okay, can you hear me? Is that better? Is that better? Okay. Could you? Um, how would you increase accessibility for student groups to the funds? Oh yes, it would be safe accessibility to the funds. Um, I would really focus on getting all the information out there as early as possible as chair. And I would just keep very open lines of communication and I would make sure um, even advertising for our funds would be, um, I would make sure that that was out there. I looked at the bylaws for, I believe it was 2009 for the description I looked at, and it talked about daily growing ads, so I might look into something like that. And uh, most of all, I would just keep open lines of communication at all times. Thank you. Dr. Geller? Hi, this, uh, this is the chair position that you're being considered for. Can you briefly talk about your leadership experiences or how you think you would uh, operate and function as the leader of the Yes, my lead experiences um, being the intern for the during the current spring quarter. And in spring quarter, I'm also the transitional campus director. And so I've worked mostly with the team of 2014 to 2015 directors. We all uh, just collaborate and we help each other get um, all the way from week to site to our field to our open house. And so I feel that I have really good experience with a team, so I would bring that to the committee 
and um, also I'm going to be finance director for the Community Service Commission, and so I've been trained for that position, and I begin to work collaboratively with the different committees in the Community Service Commission, and so I really feel like to the CSA. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay. Last call. Okay. Um, if you could make any changes to the fund, what would you what would you change about it? Well, I have to say I did present to CS Mini during my training for a Project Wild Finance Director position, and I thought that the experience was really efficient and really positive overall. What I, will, what I will say about funding bodies in general and some problems the community service programs feel is just making clear that the deadlines are created as early as possible. So I would make sure that I told all of the of all of the organizations that the problems um, when they just their by and I would send out a few of the teachers um, to get their work done. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Seeing none, we'll go into your one minute for your closing. So again, we have 10 seconds. I'll say 10 in the microphone, so you know you've got 10 seconds left. All right. So in closing, I would just like to say that I had a really positive experience in community service commission. It's um, in particular my experience about the I've been involved in since fall quarter. And I would really appreciate the opportunity to get even more involved in helping community service organizations by being chair of the CSP fund. And I always um, feel that I have a lot of passion about everything I do, and I really bring my passion and uh, my 100% effort to this position. And I would just also like to thank all of you for this opportunity and for your consideration. Okay, thank you so much. Just give a round of applause. So Emily, we are going to move into um, the discussion of your appointment. You're welcome to either stay on via Skype, but I also want to offer the opportunity if you'd prefer to not be on um, and I can give you a call with what the result is. Um, but it's completely up to you. You're welcome to stay on Skype, and then that way you can just kind of see what the result is. So it's up to you. Um, I'll just stay on if that's OK. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Um, OK, so we'll move into discussion regarding Emily for CS Mini Fund Chair. Um, I can go ahead and start. Um, so she came with very high recommendation from Zach. Zach can be here today. Because um, he is in Europe, but Zach Yamon had great things to say about her since she is in CSD currently. He talked about her organization, and he was one who recommended her for chair as well. So um, he's obviously had a lot of work with her um, and the opportunity to do so, and she, he had great things to say. Ian? Um, I really like to start the uh, interview that you know, she mentioned that she got a little guidelines, she knew who to find it now, um, and was really prepared to. Step right into her role, so that was a great positive. Okay. Anything else? I can also, as always, entertain a motion at any time. Heather? I move to approve Emily Colheim. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, to the community service, community service mini five chair. All right. Is there a second? Then by Alia. All those in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six. Those against and those that abstain. All right, to six zero zero vote. Emily's been approved to share. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Emily. Thank you for Skyping in. Thank you so much. I can't wait to get started. All right, great. Thank you. Okay, um, so next up we have Rebecca, who's here in person. And then Moniel's going to be next, and he'll be on the Google Hangout. Okay, thank you so much. So, uh, we'll process you for just a second. We'll do a quick, I guess you just read. So, we'll do your ARC review really fast, and then we'll go ahead and do a presentation. So, I'm going to pass it off to you. Thank you so much for coming. All right, so, Ian, I'm going to pass it on to you for her ARC review. Okay. So, her recommendation is that she's very knowledgeable and very experienced in running community service partners right. and conducts herself very well with Okay, thank you. So Rebecca, if you want to come right up front, uh, so you'll have your one minute for your opening, five minutes, million times, five minutes for your questions, and then one minute for closing. And I will hold up a 10 when you have about 10 seconds left. So hi, uh, my name is Rebecca. I'm an incoming third year neuroscience major, philosophy minor. Uh, this past year, I've gotten really involved in community service. I joined Project Wild actually as a freshman, um, and since then, 
I've been more and more involved, and I was the finance director this past year, and I've been training Emily to become the next year's finance, finance director. Um, in the upcoming year, I'll be the co-executive director of Project WILD, uh, just so you guys know, WILD stands for Working for Immigrant Literacy Development. So we go to uh, two different elementary schools in LA and work with kids, and it's something I'm very passionate about. Uh, in addition to that, I'm a writer for the Facing Project, it's one of CSU's new projects, I'm sure you've heard of it. And I also went to New Orleans through alternative spring breaks for an urban renewal project. Um, so I've done a lot of community service at UCLA, and I've loved it all. I would love the opportunity to contribute to other project success here at UCLA. Okay. Thank you. Um, so now I will do five minutes of questions from the council. Is there any questions for Rebecca? Pardon? I know you brought it up with us in the heart um, interview, but maybe you can provide some on um, the side of the table. How are you going to improve this semester? So I think I brought this up during the ARC interview, um, but I think a lot of the funding bodies have evaluation programs, so ways for projects to evaluate their programs that we know that the money that we're giving out is as it's spent successfully and effectively. So I think that would also be useful in CS committee, just that we know that the money that we're giving is being spent well, so that when these projects apply again, we know that they're able to use this money effectively. Any other questions? Um, what will you do to increase the awareness of the funds that you have in this project? So in the upcoming year, I'm going to be a project liaison director in CSC. So I'm going to be, I have about six projects that I'm going to be working with. Um, and because of that position, I get to talk to a lot of the different projects in CSC. And that also gives me access to other groups and organizations on campus. And I hope that through that, I'll be able to communicate effectively deadlines, important things to remember about C, uh, about CS Mini. Uh, I hopefully. Every, all the deadline states will be very clear so that projects can use their funds. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Um, what kind of criteria do you So I think that one of the things that I found in Project Wild that really distinguishes a successful program versus a less successful program is organization and planning. If a project is able to ahead of time really get out the details, predict any problems that might arise during this program, I think they're able to have a successful program. And I think you can tell how planned the project is based on their application through their hearing. Um, so I think that's one of the main criteria in judging a project application. Okay. Seeing no other questions, um, I'll turn it over all right, we'll go into your one-minute vehicle. So uh, thank you so much for hearing me uh, today. I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, working at UCLA is just such an amazing opportunity because there are so many students here that are passionate about what they do. And I think serving on a funding body, you get to hear about the students' passion. And I think that's an amazing opportunity. Um, and I'd love to contribute to project success here at UCLA. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're going to discussion to welcome to set up Irish Day um, here at Food Lab School. Okay, um, so we'll go ahead into discussion regarding Rebecca's program. Hello. Um, I think Rebecca is, you know, really well spoken and well versed in, um, in you know, the committee guidelines, and I think that she has a very solid um, vision for you know the future of this committee. Okay, I'll go ahead. Uh, so Zach also had incredible things to say about Rebecca. Um, so she obviously worked in CSC and he just had phenomenal things to say that she's really shown um, leadership and really recommended her for this role. Let's see. I think uh, in combination with Eva, I think it's wonderful that she both had experience and really the vision for where she wanted to take it and understood both the strengths and maybe some of the improvement. Um, and it's also wonderful that the fact that uh, there's no just we will do in such kind regardless or in terms of regardless of a lot. So I think um, those two make her both make her really strong for this. Okay. Perfect. I move to approve Rebecca's start to the Community Service and Funding Committee member. Okay, so second. Standing by Ian. All those in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six. Those against and those in state. All right, to six years, year vote. Rebecca starts and approves for TCF. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, so next we have. Okay. Oh, yeah. 
Okay. Okay. Um, so next up, we have O'Neill for SFAP. Um, so it's be available via Google Hangout, which is working. Patty and I are using this for the first time. <laughs> Yeah, you there. <laughs> <laughs> Is anyone an expert at Google oh, Hangout? I don't Can you see us? Let's see if the, the sound's working. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Alright, we're just working on the sound if you can hear me. I can hear you. Okay, can you hear me? <laughs> okay fantastic. Um, so we're really going to quickly read a description about SFAC and about the position. Then we're going to go into a review of your ARC interview, um, and then we'll pass it on over to you. So you'll have a one minute for your opening, followed by five minutes from council, and then one minute for your closing. Um, so I pass off to our internal vice president to read the position description. Uh, student, fee advi student Fee Advisory Committee, or SBAC, functions as the primary agency for channeling student input into decisions regarding the level and use of student fee funds assists the chancellor in ascertaining views of the student body on matters pertaining to student fees, provides a continuing study of student fee allocations, and recommends student fee funding priorities to the chancellor. He advises the chancellor on the level of student fees, meets no less than four times per quarter. The four undergraduate members are appointed by the USAC president for a two-year staggered term. Thank you. So, the I can pass on to you for the ARC review. Sounds good. Emil is in the seen very critical uh, of the fund and loans make a lot of changes. Uh, he was also very knowledgeable of having served on that side uh, before. And his main focus on ensuring that the student fees uh, really benefit the student population here at UCLA um, was also a benefit to his uh, to his And uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and then just for the council, so it is a two-year appointment. Um, Romeo is going on to his fifth year, but is staying a sixth year, so he'll be here to continue off the term. All right, so I'll pass it on to you. So you'll get a one minute for your introduction. Um, I'll say 10 into the microphone. You have about 10 seconds left to kind of give you a little bit of warning. Um, but I will start telling you whenever you're ready. All right. Hello, council. Hello. All right. Hello, council. Hello, that. I'm a fourth year mechanical engineering major, and I have sat up a quick prayer, and I'm hoping to do another two years in this The main objective that I'm hoping to come from SFAC with this board is that um, I want to increase transparency with SFAC, uh, especially since uh, tuition is rising and service fees have remained stagnant for the past 10 years. I think it's more crucial now than ever to make sure that students understand where this $40 million is going to and benefiting them and making sure that they have tangible goods. One of the main problems with SFAC um, currently is that our funds are going towards intangible goods, such as benefit increases, and I want to levy that cost to the appropriate departments and create more tangible goods from that $41 million to service all students. Um, moving forward as well, uh, we used to have an intern position um, on SFAC, and I hope to use internal funds within SFAC, aside from the $41 million, so just our internal funds, um, to fund an intern position and that intern position will serve as a liaison between campus groups um, and the daily movement to make sure that all students get to know what's happening with their money. 
Um, furthermore, um, I want to also, in line with increasing transparency, making sure students know where their money is going, I want to get um, a stronger connection with students by making sure that SPAC is representing students and connecting to different student organizations on campus, whether it be South Campus organizations, multicultural organizations, etc., to make sure that they're getting the funds that they need to make sure that um, they're able to find the programs that they need as well. Okay. Um, furthermore, across the board, since SPAC is a part of CSF, which is the Council on Student Fees, um, I want to make sure that UCLA remains strong amongst all the UCs. Okay. Great. And, okay. and the Council on Student Fees. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard to see, so it's going to be a little extra time. Okay. Thank you. So now we'll go into five minutes for questions from the Council. Um, so that I've already answered everything. Ian? All right. I don't know if you're going to hear me, but uh, what Tangible changes, um, or what programs will you prioritize, or how would you decide, how would you decide um, what priorities are allocated funding? So I think uh, one of the things that we need to prioritize are, for example, I think someone mentioned this earlier, um, but uh, making sure that we see what spaces on campus are receiving funding from SPAC and making sure that students get out um, services from those places. For example, someone mentioned the Women's Center and other places on campus, so um, I think that was in line with dance groups and cultural organizations, making sure that they have a space to practice for. For example, I know Rose Hall costs like $30,000 for one night, uh, making sure that those organizations have a space on campus from SBIC funds so that they can put on these programs that help to increase, you know, the cultural diversity of UCLA. Also more um, academic programs, I know like places like the Writing Center example are being cut back, um, so making sure that there's academic resources um, as well, um, to not academic, because SPAC is not an academic um, background, but kind of um, things that supplement our academic, um, sorry, things that supplement like um, the academics in a more cultural and more like broadening horizons way. Um, for, for example, last year we tried to, um, I was part of the committee that um, put some money out of the athletics department and moved that money towards um, our. Um, Operating budget to help give caps some more um, more money to operate for from student fee funds and kind of just taking the money away generally from um, all these benefit increases and uh, so-called temporary positions and moving that towards like physical events on campus, whether that be for um, for example financial literacy or fiscal awareness, um, cultural awareness, um, things with hate crimes, like things like that on campus. And thank you. Are there any other questions? Um, so you mentioned taking away funds from um, positions that you think are not really benefiting the student body. How will you decide what what positions those are? Um, that's very different thing. That's a, that's one of the things that kind of aligns with transparency is that making sure that SPAC is really crucial in getting student input for this upcoming year. We want to make sure that it's not just those four undergraduates sitting on the council that are going to be lending what the entire undergraduate population wants. It's going to be making sure to connect with all of the undergraduate student associations. Um, sorry, undergraduate, under, uh, sorry, my bad. Undergraduate students, like uh, undergraduate students, uh, to get them the like the resources that they need. How specifically are you going to be outreaching to these students that you mentioned that you have their input? Um, so one of the ways is going to be um, uh, the enormous activity spread was one suggestion, uh, was to make sure that SPAC is prominent at the enormous activity spread since all the organizations are out there. Um, another way is due to intern position, as I mentioned earlier, so SPAC used to, have, used to have an intern position and kind of making that intern position more prominent and becoming a liaison between all the campus entities, but also making sure that SPAC itself is very prominent in those spaces as well. And I think that's also something that could be facilitated through office hours and making sure that um, like the liaisons are present during those office hours to make sure that students have proper channels to get those inputs. Okay, are there any other questions? Last call. Okay, um, seeing no more questions, we'll go into your one minute for your closing. So I'll try to say 10 a little loudly for when you have 10 seconds left, um, but I'll start the timer whenever you're ready. Okay, um, I'll start now. I just want to thank the council so much for their time. Um, moving forward, I would really like to see uh, tangible goods come out of the student service fee fund. Um, as I have mentioned before, 
um, the student service refund has remained stagnant, and students are needing more and more services to be able to have a brewing experience at UCLA. And one of the things that I want to do is make sure that um, benefit increases are not what are not what, are not the things that are absorbing our forty one million dollars. Um, so I want to see more tangible goods come out of this within the next few years, um, because benefit increases are actually causing the forty one million dollars to fall into deficit in two years. I also want to have an intern position to be able to increase the transparency um, of SPAC and its operations to make sure that all students are having their proper input and seeing how SPAC funds are operated. And also moving forward, I also want to make sure that SPAC remains, uh, our UCLA SPAC remains really prominent amongst all the UCs as UCLA has been a very prominent figure amongst the entire um, UC Council on student fees. Okay, thank you so much. Let's give a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we're going to go into discussion about your appointment. So you're welcome to stay on via Google Hangout, and because you can watch during USAC Live anyway. So you're welcome to stay on as we discuss. Um, if you feel more comfortable, you're always welcome to log off, and I can call you after with the result. But it's completely your decision. Okay. Uh, I think yeah, I rather have y'all talk internally. Okay. So you want me to call you? Yes, please. Okay. All right. We can do that. Okay, perfect. So we'll end the Google Hangout and I'll give you a phone call. Okay, thank you okay. so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, everybody. See you soon. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Okay, um, so we'll go ahead into discussion. Let's see. Uh, he has a really strong and organized and changeable plan in place, and that was very, very helpful to see. He seems to have a really qualified and strong plan. Okay. Uh, I agree with Lucky, and I think he was like very on point with all the changes that he needs to make, especially once the organization has been asking for, especially for like several years, including cultural orgs that um, have wanted to be involved in boards or other things that they might have that opportunity because of uh, funds. Um, and also we talked about financial and physical literacy as well as social responsibility on campus, so like those issues um, which have you know been a problem throughout the year. And finally, his experience and the need for transparency throughout the year. I've also worked with Camille personally in ACC, and he has an incredible work ethic. So the fact that he's going to be going on two years after our work is great, he's great, he has so much experience, and his experience in the space with so many different organizations, especially local organizations, shows that um, he will be able to that in terms of the liaison position um, later with the month. Okay, anything else? Yeah, as always, I can never change a motion. Anyone? Ian? I would like to approve Royal Chairs to the student fee opportunity. Great, is there a second? Second by Alia. All those in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six. And those against? And those abstain? All right, just six years here a vote. Are you also approved for us back? Yay! We're happy to be here. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, in order to notify him, Heather, would you mind just sending him a quick phone call? <laughs> so, you can do the media here. Yeah, just yeah, say to the other Heather. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so, thank you all for, I know we had a few appointments this week, um, so thank you all for being so um, engaged and asking questions and everything. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm gonna, next week we'll probably have a fair amount of appointments as well, so just be prepared for that. Um, we'll go ahead into officer and member reports. And also thank you, Patty, for dealing with technology and everything. <laughs> okay, we'll go into officer and member reports, so I will go ahead and start. Um, so right after our last meeting, I actually had a focus group regarding two True Bruin um, Week, so that new orientation. Uh, it was a focus group that was put on by um, Vice Chancellor um, Nina Montero's office. And so it was great seeing um, what they're actually going to do, and it's really exciting. They're going to be um, doing something different this year. So our, I believe it's the um, volunteer day. It's going to switch to a different day of the week, leaving that Monday available for new students to do something else. And so, all good? Yeah. OK. So excited. Okay. <laughs> um, so basically, they're going to be having it this time to do something where they're going to do a more of an artistic approach bring different stories and experiences about all the different identities here at UCLA. 
Um, so it's kind of a more of an artistic way to address some of the things that's happened over the past few years. And they're bringing in sorts of all different entities and all these different organizations to do these presentations at this event. Um, so I'm looking forward to see this come more to fruition and see what they end up doing. Um, I'll probably be reaching out to all of you as well because they're looking for some people to come and present at this event. So if we need to call you Pavilion, um, some people in, I believe the Dead are the ones doing this. So it's a very, very artistic approach. It can do something engaging for new students. Um, so I'll probably be do, sending out an email later on about potentially some of you if they want to get involved with it and have the opportunity to do so. Um, tomorrow I am doing a webinar with UCOC to, I wrote this all out, to review and discuss the proposed student model for um, adjudicating sexual assault and misconduct on campuses. Um, this proposal is based off of the recommendation number two made by the task force in September 2014. Um, so I'll have more information on that after we have the webinar, which will be taking place tomorrow. That again is for UCOC. Um, and then this past weekend, uh, we had the Council of the Presidents Retreat, so this is for the undergraduate and graduate presidents um, from the UC. So we had almost everyone there, a couple of people were absent. Um, Avi Obed and then the new student leader designate, Marcelo Ramirez, came and presented on the shared governance proposal. Um, it was unanimously endorsed by our council, and so I'm really excited to see um, what goes on with that. If you're looking for more information, the Daily Cal just wrote something today, so you can actually read an article. I think Avi posted it from the Regents Facebook. But basically, it's about getting a new seat, a new student seat on the board of regents. It's about increasing transparency and student representation. Um, another aspect of that was getting the seat, and then also that would involve passing a constitutional amendment um, to the state of California. So that's something that's going to be big time. But um, hopefully, students can get on board and start advocating for that soon. Uh, we also had Kevin Sabo, who's acting as the president, uh, the interim president for UCSA to go over their new proposed funding model. So they're actually looking to change, because right now, UCSA receives about a little over 600,000, and so they want to get it closer to 1 million for things like Congress, um, also to give money to, to council presidents of CP um, for us to meet regularly and to have more funding. Um, they're still working, working about what they're going to do if they want to do an opt-out fee or an opt-in fee, um, but they're looking to do more solidify their app organizing finance committee, and that's going to be in September. Uh, they also met with President Palatano and she's in support of them increasing funding, but again, they're not really, the details aren't really matched out yet. Um, that's something that'll be happening in the future, and for those of you going to UCSA Congress, they'll have more information on that. Um, we also did a really interesting thing, was um, each campus talked about their pros and cons that they had about their campuses and things that their student government is working on. It is very interesting to see a lot of similar issues that are happening at UCLA and happening at the other UCs. Almost every single uh, president in some way, shape, or form is working on food security. Um, which is obviously something that is a concern here at UCLA. A lot of them talked about housing, specifically graduate housing, um, which our counterparts kind of at GS there have really been focusing on that. So we're looking to pass to council presidents of the, count, the council-wide initiative on housing, especially for graduates, um, since a lot of them are not receiving very much money, especially with their TA um, or the C stipends for their research, not really getting enough to um, stay at that standard of living, depending on which campus they are. Um, one thing I thought was interesting was a lot of them were saying that they, on their campuses, their administration were very difficult to contact. So I just want to thank our admin for always being here and being willing to listen and help us out in different ways. Um, a lot of campuses had a lot of grievances about admin not being very easily accessible. So that's one thing I think is pretty great about UCLA is we have great contact and great relationships with our administration. Um, I also brought up, we are one of the few campuses that are having such issues with funding for student groups. And that's because we have so many more student groups than other campuses have. I said we have a little under 100, which I just learned we have a little over 1,100. Um, and 1,117. But I said that, and a lot of the presidents gasped. They're, they don't have anything near that. Um, so that, unfortunately, is a very unique issue to UCLA. Um, and then with that, I was actually elected chair as council president. So I will be acting in that capacity. Thank you. <laughs> so I'll be acting in that capacity. <laughs> um, so I'll be acting in that capacity um, until my term is over, which will be next July. So it's me and then the um, graduate president from Davis will be acting as the chairs. Um, so I'll have a lot of information on council of presidents. We'll be looking very closely with President Balsano. We might even try to request a meeting with Governor Brown as well, which would be interesting if the first time that that's happened. Um, but the council of presidents, very excited for this year and everything. Um, with that, that is my officer report. Are there any questions? Oh, and for Congress, for because um, Zach Walter's not here, but for UCSA Congress, if you are a council member, you can go. Please email or text Zach and let him know that you want to attend. Um, you don't need to fill out an application, but just tell them, um, tell him before tomorrow.
Okay, are there any questions? Ian? Do we, have any, do we know if the um, minimum wage increase for certain workers uh, you see will affect our budget? So this is something I've been talking to Roy about, um, and unfortunately a lot of the campuses kind of thrown up in the air about this one. Um, he's saying there's still lots of interpretation. He's still working on it. Um, the potential issue of that I may be foreseeing um, is the idea that ours is set to 20 hours. And according to President Politano's um, proposal, that if you work at least 20 hours, which qualifies us, then the minimum wage increase would go up. So that's a conversation that we can potentially have in the future is either one, staying in law or staying where we think with President Politano's proposal, or perhaps changing that bylaw to say maybe 19 hours a week so you don't qualify for that 20 hours. Um, but Roy has been doing some research on that. I also contacted Eddie Sivins to ask about that as well. Um, but they're still, a lot of campuses are still unsure what to do. Um, do our administrators have any information on that? Last I heard, we still don't have campus clarity whether the local Los Angeles minimum wage will apply to us or how um, Governor Hunter. Try to get them for you. Okay. Um, but follow up in that email thread so that we can follow yeah, up yeah. the up to there on that. Yeah. But I would assume the night on Tuesday if he said Tuesday. And if he objects, then blame me. But let's just say the night Tuesday, so because I would call guys all Tuesday. <laughs> Alright, any other questions? Okay. Um, pass it on to our internal vice president. Welcome back, Heather. Let's give a call to be that one. We're talking, we're talking very Okay. Well, it's great to be back. Um, you know, it's been hard, like, working with other people's schedules, um, the time difference and everything. But thankfully, over summer, you're doing just a lot of, um, you know, planning, which we can do, like, via email and stuff. Um, first off, our USAC retreat, I'm meeting with Patty um, and Deb later this week to kind of um, solidify um, you have some objectives for this retreat, um, some trainings for this retreat. If you have any suggestions, um, please feel free to email me. Um, I also want you all to email me with the date. I sent out an email before um, I left for Europe um, to send me your, uh, your schedules for early fall quarter on the weekends. It'll be a Friday, Saturday, Sunday um, retreat. So please send me your schedules if you have not already so that I can um, have that all planned within the next few weeks. Um, this week I'm going to Chicago with Marvin. Yeah, I'm really excited. It'll be my first time. I think it's Marvin's first time too. So um, I'm really excited. I'm going for the um, Interfaith uh, Youth Corps training conference. So. I'm really excited about that. I'll come back and share all that I learned with you. I'll, I know that they um, produced some really cool videos of the speakers that they have there, so I'll share those links with you. I'll, it's supposed to be really inspiring, and I'm really, really looking forward to that. Um, I will be meeting with Mike Cohn later, not this week, next week, um, to discuss like a a student organization resource fair it was something that he had talked about at the Seoul luncheon that we had. So 
um, I'm going to be meeting with him to follow up with that and see how USAC can be of support um, to that program. Um, I'm going to be meeting with Nancy Greenstein um, next week to discuss Campus Safety Week, which is going to be held week four of fall quarter. So block that schedule off or that week off so that we don't have overlapping programs. Um, I know that <laughs> Transfer Pride Week is going to be week two, third week. Okay. And then I think that we figured out our whole thing. So, um, yes. Week four, I call it Campus Safety Week. Um, and I'm hoping to have um, the, a hunting ground screening. Um, it's still in the works right now, um, but we, Heather and I have been in contact with um, Joshua, Joshua um, who is kind of like the point person for all of this. So um, we're hoping to have that screening, but I will um, kind of let you know as that develops. Um, a few weeks ago, I had a, like a meeting-ish, I guess, email update. Um, Jacob Finn was also CC'd on that. Um, from Veronica De La Cruz, who is the, the Los Angeles Deputy City Attorney, and she um, has been working with us um, this past year on the West Side um, Lighting Initiative and kind of seeing what we can do to improve the lighting in the North Village. Um, her office has hired a West Bureau Community Resource Specialist, um, and her name is Myra Ceballos. And um, the list of problematic lighting um, areas have been sent to Veronica, who sent it to um, the new the new hired uh, specialist, and she has forwarded that to um, the Department of Street Lighting for Los Angeles, so um, she's going to be the point person from here on out to follow up with regarding the um, the lighting issues and solving you know the lighting problem here in Westwood. So I'm really excited about that. I'm hoping um, to see some results um, you know this upcoming year. Um, oh, and then last week I um, talked to Zach uh, Damron about. Um, the new funding website, which Patty, I wanted to talk to you about too. It's really great. Um, it's kind of like a consult. If you haven't already seen it, um, I think that it's still we're still like playing around with it. Um, but it's really cool. It has um, it's a new it's a portal, so the students are student leaders are going to be able to log on to it and have it an entire list of the funding. Um, applications right there, and they're going to be fillable PDFs. I was playing around with it um, with Logan earlier, and he has done such an awesome job with it, so I'm really excited for this to roll out. Um, so I'll be making suggestions. My funding directors in my office will be making um, suggestions and revisions to um, to that website so that we are um, you know, producing a website that is going to be most efficient for student organizations to use. That's all for me. Right, are there any questions for our internal vice president? One question. Have um, you been making a motion to send you the schedule issues in the early fall? So, oh, yeah, yeah, for early fall. I already don't know. So I'll follow up another. Okay. Yeah. Right, are there any other questions? Okay. Um, oh, just a side point. Logan does so much work for you, Zach. So if you ever see him around, just thank him. Like he is spending all that time in IT and everything. So please just thank him, give him a pound and ask him. Yeah, Barbara? Um, quick update when Heather was um, mentioning planning week four and then transfer prior week three. Um, I didn't get a chance to have also in week four here, so I just want to throw it. Um, SWC, I talked to Heather, and then we were talking about different weeks, and then we're looking into um, a large scale. Um, so we have two, three, and four are blocked out all quarter. Yeah. <laughs> of course, if you want to do something, you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we'll go on to our external vice president. Cricket, he's not here, and we need to start this report. Um, so, with that, if you have questions, you can be like Ollie and email him. So. <laughs> All right, great. We'll move on to our general representative, Jean. Hi, everyone. Um, okay, so last year, I got the opportunity to meet with Lauren, who 
we have, which are the old instructors, so we're working on kind of establishing how my office can best help that, especially when I think we're on the platform, since they have a lot of the same goals. Um, we're really excited. We kind of made a plan of what like, we're trying to reach out to, um, as well as how my directors uh, for um, the mental health wellness component will be working with their liaison, and kind of how my entire staff and health and wellness component will be helping them in return on uh, how to better approach this. So we kind of have a training line that we're looking for here. We're trying to figure out how to best um, have two organizations kind of choose the liaisons and also encourage them to have a separate uh, position on the board for the liaisons for the coming years. And uh, we're also getting in contact with more of the applicable organizations, especially um, in the greater LA area that kind of are for specific cultural community. Um, so it's great because a lot of them have on these like resources that maybe you want to learn to use the language students, especially because um, most of the resources are for uh, students of color and communities of color, especially for adults ranging from like 18 to 30, which are ones the most underutilized. Um, and hopefully like these individuals one day are able to like can use the resources and pass on that knowledge um, to older folks, uh, especially because there is a huge stigma around mental health that continues to persist within communities of color. Um, another thing that I need was probably creating some theories to help uh, with this class how to move forward with establishing prayer and the non denominational prayer and education space. And I would love to get both theories from whoever you learn in Chicago. Um, so they might try to incorporate that in with entry dialogue and entry that could be probably taking place there. Um, I also met some really incredible doctors at Long Reagan who are super interested in getting involved in the climate change. Um, project. So I know one of the um, themes that the student partners had discussed with me that they wanted to bring up when we would have um, a night market would be um, domestic violence, especially within communities of color. And so a lot of doctors have had either patients or um, have had friends that have experienced these types of really unfortunate situations. They would love to talk about not only um, what it means on your mental and emotional health, but also you know how to kind of help others through it and how they also experience um, you know those situations. So Thanks, thank you. Any questions for John with the Um let me know when uh, you're having the all of us trainings for uh, for your outreach directors because uh, I was actually speaking to Savannah last year about having, and Rachel about having uh, my SGLs be trained uh, as well. So we, maybe we could just coordinate and have one big yeah. training. No, for sure. And I know both of uh, Brooke and Marsh have mentioned how they would love to have a kind of a liaison from every office. So maybe we could get like, you know, one director or the staff member from every office to do that training. Okay. Pardon? Yeah, um, thanks for bringing up all these great points. And I will definitely try to provide you feedback whenever you can. Um, a lot of alpha walls in there. I think that's amazing that like, on the opposite side of them just one. Um, regarding domestic violence, that's something that's really um, it's an important topic. There's a lot of stigma around this period. And so um, knowing that 7,000 solidarity before we're leading now in the tech culture, and they're actually looking at probably do something with the October, um, so uh, maybe we can talk a little bit more and then see what we can do to collaborate. Well, that's so funny that you actually asked me, and I told you to do that, and then I was like, I must have been around this during this week. But it was like happening literally right at the beginning of the quarter, so it was not going to happen, so it was going to work out. But I still have like all the things that I'm doing from it. And I have so many really great resources. Um, she's a UCLA alum who works with a project called The Leader Between the World, which is um, helping uh, you know, help women who are victims of domestic violence feel who are. So it was a really great uh, way. And like they also like kind of use some sort of poetry, they like show their artwork, talk about their experiences, they'll put the food on them. Awesome. All right, are there any other questions? Okay, um, we'll move on to our Hunter Race Commissioner. There's no updates from Trent, but he'll be back next meeting. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. excited. Are there any questions for our team? <laughs> okay, um, so next we have F, we have um, Administrative Representative, so Roy's not here, and Dr. Geller. Okay. 
Um, Michael Starr is not here. See, he's not here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just um, one quick update as Heather mentioned. So we're working on a new event site. Uh, ready. It's getting ready to launch. So if you didn't have any edits to turn into me, hopefully by, let's say, middle next week, then my goal is during August um, to be training all the solar advisors, informing them of the new procedures, getting off that information out, um, because we'd like to launch this for this first quarter soon. Um, so we want to get that up and running as soon as possible as people usually start filling up that allocation application at the end of September. So um, yeah, it's really nice. It's very straightforward. We try to um, fix a lot of issues that students have with our original application. The biggest one is wanting to be able to go back and look at the previous applications that they have filled out um, in the years prior. So this system, you can go and look at your application you submitted the month before, or the quarter before. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll do a presentation once we're ready to go. Um, I'll do a little special presentation to show everyone. Okay. Are there any questions? Okay, next up we have our general representative, Juan. Yeah. So the one thing that um, Danny wanted me to update you all on um, that our office has been working on is the on-campus tailgate um, coming around. And we have been meeting with rec administrators and applicants. Um, and this is looking like to be a really, really big event. Um, they said that they want to cap it at about 8,000, 9,000 people. Um, and we, you know, at first we weren't thinking, like, oh, this is going to be that big. But from what they have kind of told us is, before the Stanford game, they kind of expect UCLA to be undefeated going up, up to the Stanford game, which is, it's a Thursday. Um, it's Thursday, October 22nd. And it is in Poly Pavilion. And the reason it's because UCLA is just expected to be, to be winning all the way up through Stanford, it's going to attract a lot of local community members. And so the one thing we're trying to figure out is what the model is going to be. Um, do we want it open to just UCLA students? And you look at the Bruin card. Um, I know like, there are so many UCLA alumni that are just huge UCLA football fans. Like, should we open up all the pavilion to them? Um, and then obviously there are also concerns being that this is a early Thursday night, 7 o'clock. Like, our students are going to be a little crazy beforehand. Um, there's going to be secure measures in place, bag checks, um, CSC security from the private security company um, at each of the doors, and students are going to be uh, students and community members are going to be given wristbands at the door. Um, it's like a one-time entry, just like the first bowl, where you can't you can't leave. You have to stay in. Um, once you leave, you can't. You know, there's no re-entry. But it's looking like a really, really, really cool event, something that has not happened. Um, I know in my four years of being here, um, having 8,000, 9,000 people. And it's really great for certainly the ORL student, or I'm sorry, people who live on the Hill who um, don't have that access to television. They can't watch the Pac-12 network. Um, I know buildings may only have like one TV. Um, so it's really cool. And it's a really great uh, spirit building thing. And we're just looking forward to having it come around. Are there any questions for the Jarms and One Proxy? Yeah? Uh, what are the funding for the security? Sure. Um, obviously, a lot of our, I mean, our funding sources here. Um, I did mention, or maybe I didn't mention, we have a couple of corporate sponsorships. So Adidas is sponsoring it, um, IMG and their sponsors, uh, Rec and Athletics. Athletics has a huge you know, funding source. Um, and so we're still obviously working on the, the logistics and funding, but um, do expect that Danny's office will be coming to um, use that for USA funding of some sort. All right, any other questions? Okay, thank you so much. Um, we'll move on to our fund allocation, so contingency programming. What does the five contingency for a new job? Budget after student ban on August 1st. 5,000 portions may be involved in the car future program. 2,482 is requested, and we recommend to potentially the other. Contingency currently has the 5,695 dollars. After allocation is going to be approved, it will be 4,770. Are there any questions? 
And did um, Stephanie approve these funding sources, or is it the committee? Um, it seems like a, a low amount compared to what was requested. It was $138? Um, How much was allocated? Uh, uh, oh, then okay. 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 No, no, no. My apologies. Nine hundred thirty-eight. Okay. I thought you said one thirty-eight, and I was like, what? <laughs> okay. Are there any questions? Okay. Helen, I move to approve the contingency contingency allocation for nine hundred and thirty-eight dollars. Better second. Signed by Alia. All those in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six. Those against, and those abstain. All right, so 600 vote is UGC program has been allocated. Um, okay, we have an EVP travel and advocacy grant, which, of course, there isn't any because that's on here. Um, we did not strike that, so my apologies. Um, okay, with that, we'll move on to old business. There's no old business. There's no new business. So we'll go straight into announcements. Um, I'm going to start here. We'll just go around to please just raise your hand if you have any announcements. All right, Susan. Um, so we have a transfer transition event volunteer who will come back with us and she buys each other's behalf of the events. One is this um, Saturday, sorry, in Rio in September. I think I sent it to you, Helen, to send it to your uh, staff. I'm going to email it to you guys from uh, the transfer box office if you can sign up or send it to your office uh, staff to sign up. So thank you. Okay. Thank you for bringing back to your attention. Um, are there any questions for Susanna or Okay, correct. We'll keep moving along so if anyone has any announcements. Okay. Um, so with that, I can entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Ian? I move to adjourn the meeting at 8.26 p.m. All right, there's a second. Second by Heather. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Ian's very enthusiastic. Raise your hand. All right, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Those against, those at stake. All right, so 826, we are All right, students, so after all the finding the time of the sheet, we'll go into how to turn off the USAF live. We'll let that turn off before how to do good and walk quicker.